Hello, my name is Jennifer Cardwell, and it is my privilege to welcome you to worship with St. John's today. Today is November the 1st, which is the beginning of our annual Stewardship Month, a time to reflect on the gifts we receive by being a part of St. John's and how we give back, not just financially, but by sharing our time, gifts, and talents. Today, I would like to share with you how St. John's has inspired me and why I give to St. John's. Our congregation is made up of warm, caring, concerned, and dedicated individuals. I remember attending my first worship service and instantly feeling welcomed and surrounded by positive energy. St. John's is a family who looks after one another and welcomes everyone. The people of St. John's not only care for each other, but for the community as well. Programs like Food for Life and Ebb's Kitchen, run by volunteers from St. John's, offer support and fellowship for many in the Halton Hills community. Members of our congregation are also active in environmental and social justice causes. The outreach programs offered at St. John's inspire me to volunteer and to become an active part of my local community. We are truly blessed to have many talented musicians and choir members at St. John's who not only provide inspirational, moving, and memorable music for our worship services, but for the community as well. The Inspiring Spaces Concert Series, Christmas Cantata, and Carol Sings, drumming circles, talent shows, and concerts all bring the gift of music to be shared with the community and provide uplifting experiences for all involved. Being a part of the St. John's family, the outreach individuals provide for the community at large, and the incredible music all inspire me to give of myself and support the church financially. During November, Stewardship Month, I invite you to reflect upon and share how being a part of St. John's has inspired you. Why is our church important to you? How have you shared your gifts and talents? St. John's inspires. The way forward begins with you. Welcome to St. John's. I hope you enjoy your time with us today.
Let us pray. All loving God, we come to you with the bandages on our knees and with the trophies on our shelf. We cry with you in the grief that weighs us down and we laugh with you in the joy that sets us free. We sit with you when we can't find our way and we walk with you when the path lies clear. Sometimes it takes a knock to our reality to remind us of what is really important. You are important, God. St. John's is important. Family and friends are important. And from the words of Richard Bott, the United Church of Canada moderator, creator, as I prepare to go into the world, help me to see the sacrament in the wearing of this cloth. Let it be an outward sign of an inward grace a tangible and visible way of living love for my neighbors as I love myself. Christ, since my lips will be covered by this mask, uncover my heart, that people would see my smile in the crinkles around my eyes. Since my voice may be muffled, help me to speak clearly, not only with my words, but with my actions. And Holy Spirit, as the elastic touches my ears, remind me to listen carefully and full of care to all those I meet. May this simple piece of cloth be shield and banner, and each breath that it holds be filled with your love. In your name and in that love I pray, may it be so, may it be so. Amen. This first reading is from one of the books that didn't quite make it into the Bible. Words of wisdom written about 200 years before Jesus lived. The Jewish writer Syrac said, One's almsgiving is like a signet ring with the Lord, and he will keep a person's kindness like the apple of his eye. And now reading from Galatians 5 in the Message Bible. Christ has set us free to live a free life. So take your stand. Never again let anyone put a harness of slavery on you. It's absolutely clear that God has called you to a free life. Just make sure you don't use this freedom 
as an excuse to do whatever you want to do and destroy your freedom. Rather, use your freedom to serve one another in love. That's how freedom grows. For everything we know about God's word is summed up in a single sentence. Love others as you love yourself. That's an act of true freedom. If you bite and ravage each other, watch out. In no time at all, you'll be annihilating each other. And where will your precious freedom be then? My counsel is this. Live freely, animated and motivated by God's spirit. Then you won't feed the compulsions of selfishness. For there's a root of sinful self-interest in us that is at odds with a free spirit just as the free spirit is incompatible with selfishness. There, these two ways of life are antithetical. So you cannot live at times one way and at times another way, according to how you feel on any given day. Why don't you choose to be led by the spirit and so escape the erratic compulsions of a law-dominated existence? It's obvious what kind of life develops out of trying to get your own way all the time. Repetitive, loveless, cheap sex, a stinking accumulation of mental and emotional garbage, frenzied and joyless grabs for happiness. Trinket gods, magic show religion, paranoid loneliness, cutthroat competition, and all-consuming yet never satisfied wants. A brutal temper and impotence to love or be loved. Divided homes and divided lives. Small-minded and lopsided pursuits. The vicious habit of depersonalizing everyone into a rival, into a rival. Uncontrolled and uncontrollable addictions ugly parodies of community. I could go on. This isn't the first time I have warned you, you know. If you use your freedom this way, you will not inherit God's kingdom. But what happens when we live God's way? He brings gifts into our lives, much the same way that fruit appears in an orchard. Things like affection for others, exuberance about life, serenity. We develop a willingness to stick with things, a sense of compassion in the heart, and a conviction that a basic holiness permeates things and people. We find ourselves involved in loyal commitments, not needing to force our way in life, able to marshal and direct our energies wisely, Legalism is helpless in bringing this about. It only gets in the way. Among those who belong to Christ, everything connected with getting our own way and mindlessly responding to what everyone else calls necessities is killed off for good, crucified. Since this is the kind of life we've chosen, the life of the Spirit, let us make sure we do not just hold it as an idea in, a, in our heads or a sentiment in our hearts, but work out its implications in every detail of our lives. That means we will not compare ourselves with each other as if one of us were better and another worse. We have far more interesting things to do with our lives. Each of us is an original. And finally, a reading from the very familiar 1 Corinthians 13 in the Good News Bible. Love is patient and kind. It is not jealous or conceited or proud. Love is not ill-mannered or selfish or irritable. Love does not keep a record of wrongs. Love is not happy with evil, but is happy with the truth. Love never gives up. 
and its faith, hope, and patience never fail. Love is eternal. There are inspired messages, but they are temporary. There are gifts of speaking in strange tongues, but they will cease. There is knowledge, but it will pass. Thank you, Janet, and thank you all for joining us today. So glad that you did. As you notice, we're doing things a little di bit differently today. We're back in our sanctuary, enjoying our time and time of prayer here today. And moving forward, this is where we're going to be uh, providing our services as we look forward to a time when we can once again gather together. I'd like to thank Dom and Tony, our tech team, for pulling this all together today. A special thank you to Catherine, Sandy, Jennifer, Jim, Lois, David, Rob, and Russell, and Carolyn for the gifts and the blessings that they are bringing to us today. As I had mentioned last week, we are going to look at a new series over the month of November. It's the series on kindness. And today we're going to talk about the beginnings of kindness and the science of kindness. I'm going to ask you two questions. The first question, what do you think of when you think of the word evolution and Darwin? What comes to your mind? Perhaps your first thought was survival of the fittest, dog eat dog, maybe the uh, wolf of, of uh, Wall Street. Now, I'm going to ask you a second question. What if I told you there was something you could do today that doesn't cost you very much, that would increase your sense of satisfaction with life, and that is a part of the survival of the fittest. You see, our understanding of that survival of the fittest is sort of fed by uh, what we see on TV and movies, this idea of being the aggressive alpha male. And yet that's not really how we survive as a species. In fact, the thing that we have in common that has helped us survive is basic human kindness. Kindness is as important a feature to survival as anything involving flight, fight, and aggression. Kindness is in us. It's a seed planted in us from a very young age, in fact, from birth. I don't know if you've noticed when you're dealing with your baby sometimes that they're willing to share with you. They're willing to give something to you and they enjoy giving things to you and bringing things to you because of that kindness that's planted with deep within them that is nurtured in our society. Kindness is found all throughout nature, even in wolf packs. That's why they gather together as a social group. We see lots of two, YouTube videos where we see people uh, uploading pictures of lions taking care of children or that famous picture of the gorilla who uh, takes care of the kid who falls in its enclosure. I actually saw one a long video of a cat who was calming an anxious dog, a dog who had separation anxiety and over time this cat won the dog over and was able to calm it down so that it was a non-anxious dog when the owners went away. We've also seen lots of videos of dogs and cats comforting their human companions. In fact, there was even a scientific study that looked at rats. Did you know rats have the capability of being kind? They put some chocolate into a rat cage and the rats had a choice of releasing their rat mate from, a, from a, another enclosure or eating the chocolate. And what they found is the rats would first release their rat friend and then would share the chocolate with them. Rats know about kindness. Kindness is part of our evolution. Kindness is what helps us as a people grow. Kindness engenders trust. Kindness engenders hope in a society. In fact, evolutionary scientists have found that the more altruistic or kind people a group or community has, the more likely that community is to succeed. Now, how do you feel when someone's kind to you? Well, when someone's kind to you or when you do a kind act, you feel good. In fact, you know what they found is that people who do kind acts, even if it's unwilling, feel better about their lives. They are more satisfied with their lives. 
We also found that children who learn kindness in school have more friends in school. So kindness is that part of that social glue that keeps us together and that helps us to succeed as a society. Well, how do we get there? Well, first of all, let's take one more look at the science. When we are kind, it releases all those good chemicals that we have been talking about over the time that I've been here. Dopamine, serotonin, the chemicals that bring us happiness, and especially oxytocin, a chemical that is about binding and bringing people together. It's what happens when you look into your dog's or your child's eye, that chemical comes out and makes you feel better and wants you, makes you want to stay connected. Well, the thing about kindness is kindness is something that we need to nurture. We have the seed within each one of us, it's planted in with each one of us, but we have to learn how to be kind. We have to have those social uh, experiences of kindness in order to grow in kindness. I think many of you know that dogs seem to be naturally kind, but we also know that you can train them to be different. And in different environments, dogs can grow up to be differently natured, some aggressive, some super kind. The more relationships we as people have where we learn to be kind, the more we succeed as people and the more we are a kinder people. And the more we succeed as a society. We have to kind of work against those other kinds of evolution as though I know they're important, but they have to be balanced with kindness. And how we do that is by building relationships. You see, there's a part of our brain that also looks to kind of build connections. And once we start making those connections, it's easier for us to be kind to other people because we can see the kindness coming back to us. So how we grow in kindness is by looking at the ways in which we are similar by engaging in people that we see as being somehow outside of our social group and bringing them into our social group. We have to find ways to reward kindness in our world. And that's how we become a kinder world. In fact, they found that countries where people are kinder and more altruistic are in general happier countries. And those countries where there is less of that sort of egalitarian and common good, they tend to be less happier and have a lot more anxieties. So how do we become kinder? How do we open our hearts? Well, the most important thing we can do is to connect with people. Like I said, it's a learned behavior that is learned through being with others. And it's important to be with others that are different from ourselves in order to train our brains to be kind to everyone. You see, we're also built to be uh, tribal. We tend to be group-oriented, small group-oriented. But the success of our society depends on us being large group-oriented. And so the more we get to know other people different from ourselves, the more we actually read stories, fiction and non-fiction, about other people, the wider our perspective and the wider our hearts are open, and we can be kind to more people. So that simple thing that you could do today that would increase your sense of kindness and I mean, increase your satisfaction with life are those simple acts of kindness. In fact, they found that people who uh, do one act of kindness intentionally a day are happier overall. It also affects our physical health. In fact, they found that people who are, tend to be kinder tend to live a longer. So these are the blessings that kindness brings to us. This is the science behind kindness. As we go out today into our worlds, as we look forward to our week, let's be intentional about one kind act at least a day and see how that makes a difference in our lives. You see your brother standing by the road with a heavy load for the seeds he sowed. You see your sister falling by the way. Just stop and say, You're going the wrong way. You got a 
try a little kindness, yes, show a little kindness, shine your light on everyone you meet. If you try a little kindness, you'll overlook the blindness of the narrow-minded people on the narrow-minded streets. Don't walk around the down and out. And a helping hand instead of doubt. And the kindness that you show every day will help someone along their way. You gotta try a little kindness. Yes, sure. Thank you, Jim, and thank you again for joining us today. Remember to continue to subscribe and like our programs, and also please feel free to leave a comment. We enjoy reading your comments, whether they are on our YouTube site or on our Facebook page. As Jennifer mentioned at the beginning of this program, November is Stewardship Month here at St. John's, and we're looking at the things that make St. John's special to us and why we feel we give to St. John's to support it. I give to St. John's because of its children's program. I have two daughters who enjoy going to Sunday school and enjoy other youth programs that we provide. And I also know that there are resources that are required in order to create those programs, resources that the church provides for our teachers and for our students. So that's why I support St. John's, but also give to St. John's because I want to encourage those ministries. And I hope that you will enjoy, you will join me to encourage those ministries. Because as a faith community, we do rely on your generosity. And so please consider making a donation to St. John's. The information on how to do so is posted below in our description box and also along with any of the messaging that comes with this video. You can do this in a number of different ways, from simply clicking on a link, or if you're in the Halton Hills area, you can drop a check off at our mailbox. Next Sunday, we'll be looking at kindness from the perspective of difficult times. So how do we be kind in a difficult time? I hope you will enjoy, you will join us. We'll be closing today with our prayer and our prayer of St. Francis. Let us pray. Creative, loving companion God, you planted the seed of kindness within each heart and throughout all of creation. Help us to stir up that gift of kindness within us. Help us to open our hearts and minds to all of those around us so that we can create a world full of hope, full of trust, full of life. We pray for all those who are in caring professions, who are working with people from pre-birth to the end of their lives. We pray that you would gather, get, grant them strength and wisdom. We pray for people in care facilities and seniors' homes, for their families and friends. We give you thanks for all the different ways you've blessed us through creation and through our church families and our friends. Help us to be generous with our time and our talents and the gifts we receive as we give them in thanks to you. We bless you for creation and for water, for the gift of life around us. Help us to see the inherent worth of creation, and not just for our own use. 
We pray for all those we know who are looking to you for special needs and concerns. We pray for the people of the Philippines as they look towards this disastrous typhoon. We pray for Noah and his family, Catherine, Jerry, Sandra, Betty, Gwen, Anne, and Jerry, Rena and Ray, Miriam, Francis, Eleanor, Al, Gus, and Peggy, as well as those whom we name now in our hearts before you. May they be aware of the love that flows through them and through those that walk with them. Grant wisdom and understanding to all their caregivers. We give you thanks for the blessing of everyone watching this program today. May the light of creation shine upon each one of us, and may love enfold us. May we continue to grow in the awareness of the profound depth of love that surrounds and supports us and the whole of creation. May the pure light within each one of us guide us. May we be blessed, encouraged, and empowered in every aspect of our lives. We ask this through the living Christ, our companion on the way, as we pray in the spirit of St. Francis. As I live every day, I want to be a channel for peace. May I bring love where there is hatred and healing where there is hurt joy where there is sadness, and hope where there is fear. I pray that I may always try to understand and comfort other people, as well as seeking comfort and understanding from them. Wherever possible, may I choose to be a light in the darkness, a help in times of need, and a caring, honest friend. And may justice, kindness, and peace flow from my heart forever. Amen.